for Holger Brewery, Barber Noel. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Boge Reviews. Let me just turn this phone off because I am getting messages left, right and centre. It's probably the French having a go at me for mispronouncing that word. The Gestapo are hoovering round the graveyard, disguised as a nan, a boshop and a Roman Catholic farter. But this is the Barb Noel. And Barb Noel, what does that mean in French? That means Christmas beard. And to be honest, I don't know whether it be offended by that or not. <laughs> Fucking offended, Jesus Christ. But let me just tell you about the pain that happens when you grow a beard. I remember once I had, I get called Uncle Albert all the time. No respect these days, I fought in a war, didn't I? If you don't know who Uncle Albert is, he's a character from Only Fools and Horses, and I, you know, I get called out all the time. And, and it's Walker off the ducks back to me, I don't mind at all. But I remember once some old Irish lady come up to me, I was living in London at the time, and uh, I think it was in a pub, and she said to me, I, ne I never trust people with beards. She says, they've always got something to hide. And then after that she says, I never trust people with tattoos. They're marked for life. They could never commit crimes. <laughs> Fucking hell. She'd had a few, to be fair, and so would I. And uh, yeah, I think she was trying to tell me she didn't fucking like me, which is fair enough. I mean, most people don't. But um, yeah, what, what the fuck? What was my point of this story? Anyway, I picked this stuff up from. I'll tell you where, exactly where I picked it up from, and I've got the I've got the name written down. Let me go get the bins on. Shorty, my name is Magoo. It is from German Chancellor Herr Hitler, and here is the paper, which bears. His name upon it, as well as mine. It's from the Hereford Beer House. Look them up. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do some cracking beers. This is the... Where is it? 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 Oh, don't tell me. I didn't buy it from here. No, I didn't buy it from here. <laughs> what a fucking twat. No, I've got that. I think I must have got that from Beers of Europe. Honestly, it's all blurring into one. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I have to buy all my own beer. So it just, you know, I'll put it in the fridge and I've got stuff there that I bought in November, Christmas beer, and I've let it, you shouldn't really put Christmas beer in the fridge because it's, a lot of it is bottle fermented and it's top fermenting yeast and it, the, the yeast doesn't work well in a cold temperature. So really, I've, I, I knew I was doing it, but there is no room in this room. I know it's, it's like the fucking Dr. Who's TARDIS. Explain to me how this, TARDIS is larger on the inside than the out. Hmm? All right, I'll show you. It's because insides and outsides are not in the same dimension. It looks big, but it's fucking tiny, this room. Ain't got room to swing a cat in here. Anyway, let's just get back on topic, shall we? This is, this is the Barber Noel from the Van Herger. From the, what the fuck is it called? from the Verhaga Brewery, which is based in West Flanders. And it's unusual that they've used, I see this now and again, and I don't get it, but they've used French in there, but they're, a, they're from probably one of the biggest Flemish speaking parts of Belgium. And they've used French in the name there, which is, it's a bit unusual for me anyway, you know, having been over there and everyone's fiercely Flemish, but you know, they've done that. I don't know why they've done that, but you know, that's up to them. But it's a Christmas beer. And their specialty is the West Flanders Red Ale. Now, if you've never tried that, it's a really nice beer. But if you like sour beers, you're gonna like it. If you don't like sour beers, don't bother, because you'll hate it. It's got a very 
sour type flavour. It's like a yeasty sourness. I absolutely love it, but then again, I love sour beers. Some people don't like sour beers, so don't try it. But that's what they specialise in. But this stuff, from my research, is a blonde beer. Now, they call it a blonde, but it's 10%. So, I don't know. I think where you have these classifications of, you know, double and triple and blondes, usually blondes are called single, and it goes by the ABV. So your average blonde is usually, the benchmark is 5% and a little bit above. Then you go into the double sort of territory, which is six up to 7%, seven and a half in some cases, but that's usually a dark beer. And then anything above that is the triples. And then when you start going up from 10% upwards, <clears throat> excuse me, when you start going from 10% upwards, that's when you're in quadruple territory. So this is a blonde and it's 10%. So it doesn't really fall into any of them categories. But I've seen this before. In the words of Tom Jones, it's not unusual. So I'm not too I'm not too bothered about that. But as I say, it's a Christmas beer, so it's obviously seasonal. So I don't know why I'm putting this out there. Maybe this will be seen in years to come. But I'm probably putting this out too late for you to buy. But if you buy it, if you really want to try it, I, I don't know what it tastes like. It might be a massive pile of bollocky dog wank for all I know. But if if it's decent, you can get it from that Hereford... No, you can't get it from the Hereford beer shop. Fucking hell. You probably get it from Beers of Europe. I think that's where I got it from. I don't know. I've got. I've just got a fridge full of beer, and that's that. Look it up online. You'll find it somewhere anyway. So, before I put my foot any more in the shit that I've already put it into, let's get this beer investigated. Right. Oh, hang on, fucking hell. I can see more of my eyes shut. I'm like Stevie Wonder with a blindfold on. Hang on. Right, this is 10%. I've got to take fucking easy with this. And it is a 330ml bottle. There is the protect. Oh, there is the protected Belgian status mark on that. All good, all good. Uh, I'm trying to read what's on the back of this. Jesus Christ, they don't make this easy for the near-sighted or short-sighted. Well, I, don't know, I don't know whether I'm long-sighted. I think I'm long-sighted. That's why I'm holding it out here. I can see more when it's out here. This is one of the five golden Christmas beers. Five? F few. Few. <laughs> Fuck you know. Disregard anything I say on this one. This is one of the few Christmas... This is one of the few golden Christmas beers the oh yeah bitter and fruity taste yeah it's just basically trying to describe the flavor well i'm going to do that anyway to be honest i really don't want to get that what they've put in there i want to test it for myself so let's stop guessing let's get this beer open mate. Right, now I have, I have tried a beer from this lot before. It's the Duchess de Bourgogne, I think it's called. I don't know why they're using French. They're obviously French descent, so. But I've tried the uh, Duchess de Bourgogne, which is quite nice. And that again, that was a sour beer. And I thought that was a, like a Flemish red ale, and it was. So, I, I really don't know what to expect here. This is the sort of glass it's supposed to be drunk out of. This glass is absolutely filthy. I don't know what, Jesus Christ, that really is bad. That is not good at all. Do you know what? I'm going to rinse this out because that is a fucking disgrace. Give me five minutes. Well, I've just rinsed that glass out because that was an absolute disgrace. And I know why, because we bought some cheap dishwasher tablets and we used them once and they were absolutely terrible. They left a load of residue on there and they got binned sharpish. Anyway, let's get it into the glass see what's going on if you hear some strange noises that's a little pug that's sitting under the desk there you go all right i'm going to see if i can get the whole lot in here because these are notoriously carbonated yeah that's all going to get get itself in there now here you go. I've just rinsed that out. This is how bad 
I mean, look at that. This is how bad these dishwasher tablets are. Don't worry, you'll never see a repeat of this again. But can you see them bubbles sticking to the side? That's what they did. They, and I've rinsed that out and wiped it as well. That's how bad them dishwasher tablets are. I've got them from Aldi. To be honest, I'm never gonna fucking shop in Aldi again. The food's crap, the beer's crap, and the dishwasher tablets are crap. I mean, look at that. That is a fucking disgrace. You see that? Now that, if you ever get served a pint and all the bubbles are sticking like that, hand it right back because something has gone awry there. Let's see what we're getting on the nose. Well, I, could, I know what I'm getting on the ear. I'm getting a little pug and I don't know what... Oi, what are you doing down here? Hey. Oh, just let me introduce... If you haven't met Percy before, let me introduce you to him. Wait, come here. Come here. This is Percy. He's the channel mascot, isn't you, mate? Eh? He's got his he's got his eye on the beer already. He's not taking it off it. Look at Perth. What do you think of that? Don't whatever you do. I know I'm fucking about now, but don't give dogs beer. They're allergic to the hops. What do you? Think? Yeah, he likes that. <laughs> he didn't get any. Don't worry. Hey, look, he's a hammer. You can tell he's a West Ham fan. <laughs> isn't you, mate? You're an hammer. Anyway, what are we getting on the nose? Quite sweet, sweet banana. Candy sugar is coming through. It does smell really good though. Mmm, really nice. Oh, there's a little bit of spice on that too. A little clove. And I'm getting that, I'm perceiving that as orange peel. Mmm, interesting. Let's get this down the hatch. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is really good. Surprisingly, now this is 10% ABV. Surprisingly, very, very little ethanol on this, which, which I think is unusual because normally they do. The Belgians do make a big thing about the, the ethanol content on their beer, and you do get strong flavours of it. But I'm not getting that at all. This is quite sweet. It's got quite a lot of sweet banana on that. It's clear. I don't know if you can see it through that disgustingly dirty glass. There's a lot of carbonation on it, but it does taste really nice. I have to say. Oh, it's really good. That is really nice. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. And the biscuit malt coming through there now as well. Oh, I am getting there. And a little bit of hop bitterness on there too as well. This really is a good beer. Wow. It's very complex, I will say that. I think I'm gonna be getting flavors with every mouthful. What do you reckon, Perse? Hey, eh? mate. Candy sugar is really big, and I think that's what's giving it the sweetness. But the yeast is also quite big in this too, and it's giving it banana, some spice on there. It's like a a mixture between orange peel, white pepper, very slight white pepper. But the, the sweetness is the big thing on this. And again, as I've always said with these style beers, especially these Belgian Christmas beers, these are not for guzzling. You should be savouring these mm -hmm. and really getting the flavours from them because they're not guzzlers. You, you really can't neck these beers and you know just keep cracking them open like they little them little french dumpies that you get from the you know the, the booze cruises they're not like that at all really aren't it's not bad purse 
Oh, there's a little bitterness on there as well. And I'm not sure whether that's coming from the hops or there is some spice in here, but I'm perceiving that as hop bitterness. But it really is a complex beer that you get different flavors from, from each mouthful. Really do. But there is, a, as I say, the, the dominating flavour on this is the sweetness from the candy sugar. And if you're a fan of them quite sweet Belgian blondes, that is going to be right up your street. But I will emphasise this point. There is no real discernible ethanol flavour on that. And that can be quite dangerous because it does taste like you're drinking a blonde, which effectively you are but you're drinking a 10% blonde. Do you want to get down, mate? Yeah, I'll go on. There you go. That is a, a very easy drinking 10% blonde ale, and it's one that you need to savour because with each mouthful on this, you are getting a different batch of flavours, in my opinion. And the carbonation is quite nice too. I mean, that, that does look quite carbonated still. And if I, if I give that a little bit of a swirl, you'll get a little bit more of a head on that. And the lacing is quite nice on there too, but oh, now, now I've given that a swirl, that carbonation is just pushing all that ethanol. But there is no discernible spirit alcohol or ethanol flavour on this, which is really nice, but really dangerous as well, because that is very easy drinking. It's almost like, you know how easy drinking Leffert is? It's like that, but double the strength. And I like that. They've done something there. They've got something that is quite dangerous. Now, you know, my I like to use the term Belgian legs. That is a definite candidate for giving you Belgian legs. So what's the verdict on Barb Noel? Well, apart from taking the piss out of Christmas beards, this is really good. And the reason it's good is because it's down as a blonde ale, a 10% blonde ale, Christmas beer, if you like, but there's no discernible alcohol backbone in that. And I think they've probably done that by bumping up the, the candy sugar that's in this because it is quite sweet. Now, personally, I could drink one or two of them and I think the sweetness would start to get to me and I probably wouldn't be too, you know, I, w I probably wouldn't want another one, put it that way. I'd be all sugared out, if you know what I mean. But it is really nice. It has got a lot of complex flavours and with each mouthful, you're getting different flavours. I was getting a reasonable amount of hop character on this. A little bit of biscuit ball, which is a new one on me because really you don't get that on... Are you all right down there, Percy? You don't really get that on Belgian Blondes. It's all about the, the, like the candy sugar, a little you know touch of the clove and spice from the yeast. And, you know, a little bit of banana on there too. But this has got big flavour, but no alcohol. And it's really nice. And I have to say, so far, I was a bit I was a bit sort of weirded out because it was a blonde beer, a blonde Christmas beer. Normally Christmas beers are dark. But this, you know, this is the first blonde beer that I've tried. Christmas beer, Belgian Christmas beer that I've tried. Fucking hell, get that one out. But it's really nice. I like it. And you know what? I like it so much, I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. That really is nice. And I think they do it on beers of Europe. So if you want to get some, get some now. This is a real nice beer. It's 10%. If, you, you know, if you're getting a bit of, bit of stick for drinking too much, just buy three or four bottles of these. You know, sit in front of the family saying, I'm just having four little bottles of beer. And you'll be well on your way. And it won't feel like you've drank four cans of Tenant Super because it hasn't got that big spirit alcohol. <laughs> and remember, beer 
is working class champagne. <laughs>